Hello everyone, this is Taryn with Wonderfully Made Handcrafting and today is part three of my accordion book and we're working on dressing up this page. Now the night before last, I decided I would take out some ephemera pieces and help my process along and kind of see what I thought might look good on this page. And I put it in this little dish and saved it to the side. This helps my process so much. So if you're working on some Christmas stuff, you might just want to take a couple minutes and look at your page and get an idea of what might look good on it. You obviously don't have to glue anything down right away, but just having an idea of what might look good on this page helped speed this process up so much. Now right here I'm working on a picture of my dad and his brother when they're super young and I decided I wanted to put a little velvet trim pull tab on the top and that is from the Tim Holtz Velvet Trims in the Neutral. And then I'm taking out these pocket cards and I'm going to use this calendar piece. I've been eyeing this calendar piece forever and I just haven't found a good place to put it in this accordion book. So I decide what better place than to back it on a photo just in case that photo is turned around um, once they, you know, play with the accordion book and take it out and stuff. I want everything to be backed correctly. Um, so that is why I'm putting this on here and I will trim all the edges before I complete it. Now, like I said before in a previous video, I'm keeping all my scraps um, for this project because I've used two of them already just in this page. And so the scraps are easy to layer and put behind places to add some um, more interest to a page. And so that's why I wanna make sure not to throw anything away. And I just put it in a little baggie. I'm going to make sure to distress the edges of this back with some vintage photo. Now I'm doing this to make a uniform look and have everything look vintage. Now I have this little scrap that I cut from the vellum scenes. This was a larger like sign, but I only wanted the place where it said toys and dolls. And I'm actually backing that on some ledger paper from like the 1850s that I had. And it works perfectly. The coloring is just so nice on it. And then I'm lining up some brads and making holes to um, put those down in to just add another element to this page. Now, before I get too far along in this process, I definitely wanted to rip and kind of tear down that worn wallpaper pocket that I have going on. Um, Susie from Shabby Soul did this and I thought it added such a lovely texture to her accordion book. And so I wanted to do the same thing. Um, but when I tore it, I did tear it very well. So it was uh, worn wallpaper and it exposed that white inner section so i took some distress ink and vintage photo again and just kind of brushed that over it so it wasn't going to be so white and um, such a stark contrast but i will just brush that over it and then it is double backed wallpaper to wallpaper because i wanted it to be a thicker pocket just the one sheet of wallpaper wasn't um very sturdy and so i had double backed it and now it's super strong so i definitely have to add some glue below those folds to hold it down nicely i'm also using my fingernails to kind of rough up the edges and make it look old i wanted to ground this sign a little bit so i had this tiny little strip of buffalo check paper and see i'm using another scrap here so i'm going to distress the edge of that before i lay that down and then that will kind of ground that sign and make it not look like it's floating i had taken out all my metal elements from tim holtz and i decided i wanted to put a little mini paper clip on one of the fold downs to this pocket i really liked the touch that it gave and then i also have this peppermint drops little ephemera piece and I am going to put it over where it says novelties. And But first off, I'm going to make sure that I have everything kind of situated and laid out exactly where I want it. Before I glued down this sign, I noticed that I had this little 25 circle. It's been floating around ever since I started doing this accordion book. And I've been looking for the perfect place to put it. So I decide to add it to one of these memo pins and I'm going to stick that down behind the sign so the pointy end will be covered. Um, but I thought it was just a fun little extra to this page. 
I wanted that strip of buffalo check to definitely be under the sign, so I had to lay that down first, although I did kind of lay it up a little bit high once I laid that sign down, so I pick it up before it dries and move it down just a hair, and then I will get this all glued down. I want to glue these tickets down into the pocket so they're not movable, but as you can guess, I have to distress the edges first. So as I'm doing that, I notice that the 24 ticket, a third of it probably won't be even seen ever because it'll be tucked down into the pocket. So I don't wanna waste that. And I decide to see where it lands and then I'm going to snip off like the bottom third of that because I can probably use it in a different page. So the process of gluing these tickets and calendar in was a little tricky. Um, this pocket is super tight and so it doesn't allow a lot of wiggle room. And I also didn't want any glue oozing out of those ephemera pieces because that could possibly hold the pocket down to the backer of the accordion book or get glue on my photo. So I had to be super careful around the edges. This is actually a scrap of a pocket card that I used in part two. And I'm going to distress the edges and just tuck it behind this photo of my mom next to her Christmas tree. Not only does it add another layering element, but it also adds some more green tones into this spread. Now, as you can see here, all my photos are just temporarily held down with some mint tape from scrapbook.com. That allows me to get an accurate placement for my spreads. And now I'm just gonna glue this whole thing down. I had this little metal adornment that I wanted to put on this page and it says it's the most wonderful time of the year. So I thought that worked perfectly. I did put a little velvet trim on it and now I'm using collage medium as a glue. I haven't done this before with metal. Um, I had just actually picked up this collage medium. So I'm hoping it stays fairly well. We'll see. Um, there's a couple weeks before Christmas, so we'll see about that. I can always switch to another glue later if need be. I also have these mirrored stars and I'm adding some of that icicle crackle to them. This just tones down the mirrored look a little bit and I think it actually gives it more of a vintage look. So I wanna put my photo in the area where it's going to live so I know exactly where I want those mirrored stars to be. However, the mirrored stars weren't completely dry yet so I'm going to move on to another step. I have this peppermint drops ephemera piece still and I want to add some frosted crystal to it. So I'm going to take my Versamark embossing ink and coat the whole section of this ephemera piece and then I will just dump some frosted crystal on top of it. Frosted crystal was on my wish list for a long time and I am so glad I picked it up. I love the look that it gives, but also the texture that it gives ephemera pieces. And it has different kind of looks on glossy paper versus matte paper. And this is my first time using it on a matte ephemera piece, and I really liked it. Now, I don't really suggest doing this, um, holding a piece of ephemera while you're using a heat gun. It gets really hot, um, but I didn't want the marks of the tweezers on top of it, so I just made it work. I want to pop this peppermint drops ephemera piece up a little bit so I grab my foam tape and I'm going to cut just a piece that'll fit right in there and then pop it up on the page. By now my stars are pretty much dry so I'm going to work on putting them up in that upper right hand corner and this time I'm going to do things a little bit differently. I look exactly where I'm gonna place them first with the glue, and then I'm going to put the glue dot down because before I tried doing glue dots first and that just did not work. So this is a better scenario. I kind of get exact placement and then just lift that star up and put a dot of glue down. Now, if this is the first video you've seen of mine, I do use Barely Arts Precision Glue. I had um, got the recommendation from Lindsay at Lindsay Decor, and I have been using it almost exclusively for the last year, and I've really liked how it's worked. It's held very well. I'm looking at the left-hand side of the spread, and it's looking a little empty compared to the right-hand side, so I decide I need a little bit more layering pieces, so I grab the curator snippets and find this red one, which matches perfectly. I'm going to glue that down on the little piece of pocket card that I have, and then I also find this Mary ephemera piece, and I'm going to actually layer that vertically and put that on the edge of the photo. However, I also want to add a little bit more depth to this page and so I'm going to grab out my foam tape again and just pop that up a little bit. And then this spread will be done in my Christmas accordion book. 
If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. I will try to link everything I've used down below in the description. And if you haven't seen part two, I will link that next as well. You can find me over on Instagram at wonderfully made handcrafting and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.